Hey, this is Dr. Marisa, women's hormone practitioner, and today I want to shed light on one of the most disruptive and common hormonal imbalances that I see in women across the board, but especially I'm seeing at an all-time high in women between the ages of 35 and 50. That hormonal imbalance is called estrogen dominance. Now, the reason why we see a massive uptick, I'm talking over 80% of women will experience some level of estrogen dominance between the ages of 35 and 50. That's because we are in that perimenopause transition into menopause during those years. And during those years, our hormones are shifting and changing. And sometimes it can feel pretty drastic and it can also feel like our bodies are shifting and changing without permission. This is very much the case when it comes to estrogen dominance. Now, estrogen dominance often takes place during the luteal phase of our cycle. So our menstrual cycle is broken up into two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. And the luteal phase happens right after ovulation. Now, when we think about the luteal phase, it's often when we're dealing with PMS symptoms, and just not feeling like ourselves right before our period and into our period. Well, when it comes to estrogen dominance, those symptoms get magnified. They basically get worse. So again, in that luteal phase, we have two hormones that rise in the middle of it and then drop right before our period. Those hormones are progesterone and estrogen. And ideally, the ratio between progesterone to estrogen is 300 to 1. Now, if for any reason you have low levels of progesterone, which so many women struggle with, or you have excess estrogen from the follicular phase because it wasn't properly processed by the liver or the gut, then you're going to have a situation where you're dealing with basically unopposed estrogen. Now the issue with that is that estrogen dominance puts us at risk for weight gain, breast cancer and uterine cancer, prediabetes and diabetes. Basically it can drive metabolic disease. And that's why it's important to really take note of this because if these issues aren't treated early on, when we start to experience these really disruptive acute symptoms, then, then crazier symptoms down the road can occur. So what I want to do is I want to share with you what are the most common and most disruptive symptoms that you may encounter about seven days prior to your period and during your period. So you may notice a migraine right before your period or on the first day of your period. You may notice that you're feeling bloated, puffy, and having a lot of water retention right before your period. Crazy cramps. Um, heavy, painful periods, also painful, lumpy breasts right before your cycle as well, mood swings, you may even feel that you have more stress, you may feel overwhelmed, you may feel moments of rage and just not feeling well resourced anymore. I know that's what it used to feel like for me when I was going through the symptoms of estrogen dominance, I just felt so angry one minute and then like overwhelmed the next. I just felt like I was on an emotional roller coaster. So that's what it can feel like. Also, you may be experiencing brain fog, fatigue, cravings. Again, just think about really amplified PMS symptoms. This is really what drives estrogen or what is the drivers of estrogen dominance. Now, over time, if left unchecked, we end up seeing some bigger things as I mentioned earlier. We'll start to see, again, fibrocystic breast disease. We'll start to see weight gain, more migraines, chronic fatigue. Also, you may notice fibroids that happen and then uterine cancer and breast cancer. And so again, it's a, it's a hormonal imbalance that we really want to check. Now, there are a couple of reasons why we end up getting estrogen dominance. And again, that first one that I described in the beginning was that, again, when we're going through perimenopause in that luteal phase, that progesterone begins to drop first before estrogen ever does. And so just by the way that we shift into perimenopause, we will have less progesterone in relation to estrogen in that part of our cycle, driving these symptoms of estrogen dominance. And that's why over 88% of women will have fibroids before they hit menopause. That's how common estrogen dominance can be. And then the other reasons why we end up having um, excess estrogen in our bodies has a lot to do with our environment. So eating the standard American diet can drive excess estrogen in our body, which again can drive that unopposed estrogen. 
um, toxins, especially xenoestrogens, things like plastics, BPA, parabens um, that can be found in fragrances, receipts inside of our the lid and our coffee cups, our makeup, our lotion, our shampoo. I mean, all of these types of toxins that we're exposed to. I believe the number is we women are exposed to over 186 toxins before lunch. So those some of those are going to be endocrine disruptors and some of those are going to be xenoestrogens, these synthetic synthetic fake estrogens that build up in the system that our liver has a really hard time um, breaking down and metabolizing. Stress will drive um, estrogen dominance, um, again toxins, um, also obesity will drive it because we do make estrogen in our fat cells, our adipose cells. So these are some of the other reasons why we may see um, excess estrogen in the system. Also a sluggish liver, um, so fatty liver disease or even insulin resistance can drive estrogen dominance. And then even a, an unhappy gut. So if we're dealing with leaky gut or gut dysbiosis or you know overgrowth in the gut, especially our estrobolum, if we're not able to process that excess estrogen and send it through urine and bowel movements, then it ends up just recirculating into the system. Also another contributor to the reason why we have excess estrogen is if you're dealing with constipation. So constipation will force estrogen back into the body. So those are some of the root causes that are driving this. Yes, it can be a natural occurrence within our how our hormones are shifting and changing in perimenopause, but also this external environment that we live in, this modern day world that we live in, doesn't lend to hormone harmony, especially between estrogen and progesterone in the luteal phase of our cycle. So once you get clear if you are dealing with this or not, it is really important that you address it. And luckily, lifestyle and supplementation can really get the job done. So as I mentioned before, the purpose of our liver and gut is to metabolize things like excess toxins and hormones and our food, right? All the way through the system. And so estrogen is no exception. So we break down estrogen in phase one and phase two of liver detoxification, and then we process it and send it on through bowel movements and urine through phase three, which is our gut. And so if there's any area of phase one, two, or three that are not working properly, we're gonna see that backup or that buildup of estrogen metabolites. So what's really important is you wanna be focusing on foods like fiber, foods that are gonna feed the gut and protect the liver. Um, so liver-loving foods like lemon, avocados, artichokes, beets, right? Um, and dandelion greens, like those types of really turmeric and lots of spices, the types of foods that are really gonna support the liver. But also supplements are gonna really get the job done. So supplements like diendol methane, which are going to help phase one, and then calcium deglutarate is going to help in phase three. And then B vitamins and um, broccoli seed extract are going to help in phase two. So just note that in every different phase of estrogen metabolism, we have an opportunity to optimize those pathways so that basically the golden rule can be applied, which is when it comes to estrogen, we need to use it and lose it. And I'm talking 24 seven. So again, it's all about lifestyle. It's about healing the gut, supporting the liver, make sure that you have the right supplements so that you can process that excess estrogen 24 seven in the body so that you don't end up with symptoms of estrogen dominance.